Well, we begin tonight with continued reaction to the leader of the Archdiocese of San Francisco banning House Speaker Nancy Pelosi from receiving the Holy Eucharist in her home archdiocese. Capitol Hill correspondent Eric Rosales spoke with the Archbishop about the reasons behind his decision, and he joins us now in the studio. Eric, great to see you. So what did he say? Well, I tell you what, Tracy, Archbishop Salvador Corleone says that he's been struggling with this for years. You know, this is something, a decision that didn't come lightly. He says that he's had conversations with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi about the importance of human life and why Catholics must do all they can to protect it. Now, prior to writing the letter, he says that he prayed, fasted, and even consulted a range of Catholic leaders. He says it's important to understand the basic teaching of receiving the body of Christ. So many Catholics now don't under understand the teaching about the Eucharist, wh what it is, who it is, and what the proper disposition is to receive the Eucharist, what it means to receive the Most Holy Eucharist, to help them understand the grave evil of abortion and what it means to cooperate in evil and the different levels and, and types of cooperation there is with evil. So I wanted to be clear in laying out that teaching. The Archbishop says his decision has nothing to do with the leaked U.S. Supreme Court draft opinion regarding Roe v. Wade. But he was motivated by Speaker Pelosi's reaction to the Texas heartbeat law, which bans abortions after 15 weeks. That's, that's when uh, Speaker Pelosi became very um, outspoken and uh, aggressive, I'll use that word, in uh, vowing to codify the Roe versus Wade decision into federal law. Uh, so it would guarantee open, act, unqualified access to abortion for all nine months all throughout the country. Uh, this this was very alarming, very disturbing. That's when Archbishop Cotaglione began the Roses and Rosary for Nancy campaign, asking Catholics to pray and fast to soften her heart for the unborn. She speaks so fondly of her five children. I think she has a, a maternal heart. There's a real, I think, sensitivity there. Uh, so I asked people to pray and fast for her, and I've been trying to meet with her ever since then. I have made several attempts to, to speak with her. Uh, and I've either been denied or have just received no response. Well, she knew in advance that I would make this announcement if she did not uh, repudiate her position on abortion or at least not publicly refer to her Catholic faith and go to communion. After Friday's letter, the Archbishop tells me he's not received any response from the House Speaker. What would you want to tell those even believers, even Catholics who say that you are holding up the Holy Eucharist, you were politicizing the, the Holy Eucharist. What does it mean to politicize the Holy Eucharist? If one is following church teaching and applying church teaching, one would have to demonstrate that one is doing that for a political purpose. I've been very clear all along, my purpose is pastoral, not political. I'm not campaigning for anyone for office. Uh, my in fact, my preference would be that Speaker Pelosi remain in office and become an advocate for life in the womb. I would also point out that it's possible to politicize the Eucharist in reverse, to, uh, to receive communion as a means of furthering a political agenda, if one is motivated for that reason. So it, it cuts both ways. Last October, Speaker Pelosi met privately with Pope Francis at the Vatican while she was in Rome for the U.N. Climate Summit. The speaker said in a statement at the time that it was, quote, a spiritual, personal and official honor to have an audience with the pope. Would you like to see the church, the leader of the church, the pope, take a greater stance on this? I think Pope Francis has taken a strong stance on this. He's been very outspoken about the evil of abortion. And he sees how everything is interconnected. You know, he, in his uh, landmark encyclical on the environment, Laudato Si speaks about the interconnectedness of it all. And he brings up this issue that um, care for the environment, care for our common home also includes care for the poor and the vulnerable, including life in the womb. You know, and he's compared it to hiring a hitman to solve a problem. So uh, I, he's, been, he's been very clear about this. And by the way, this isn't the first time that a lawmaker has been banned from receiving communion. Catholic Senator Dick Durbin, the majority whip in the Senate, was barred from his diocese in Springfield, Illinois, nearly 20 years ago, the diocese he grew up in. It's important to note that I tried to reach out to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi several times, 
and have not received a response. Tracy? Eric, thank you so much. What an important interview. Um, has the Archbishop, though, has he received any backlash? Yes, he certainly has from a, from a number of people. I mean, uh, you know, the, even the board, the editorial board of San Francisco, that's the home newspaper, the San Francisco Chronicle, they've actually called for him to be replaced. Uh, they're calling on Pope Francis to replace the archbishop, and a number of pro-abortion groups are also calling for him to be replaced. And I know he's standing strong. What about other Catholic leaders? Uh, what are they saying about his decision? Well, on the opposite side, you have about uh, 17 to 20 uh, bishops all throughout the country, everyone from the Diocese of Oakland, which is right next to San San Francisco, they are calling for support for him, uh, along with uh, bishops in Wisconsin, Illinois, um, Nebraska, a number of uh, bishops there. They're all calling for support for him and saying what he's doing is what should be done to protect the lives of the unborn. Well, Eric, thank you again. I know you'll continue to follow this for us. Thank you, Tracy.